This interview with Josh Wolf is brought to you by our watering holes program. It's TomandDanWateringHoles.com. It's all our brewery and bar partners. Um, we have uh, a bunch in Sanford, including Tuffy's, Bottle Shop, and Lounge. Uh, they have their music box that is associated, like, you know, right yeah. in Tuffy's compound. I mean, it's a really, really nice music venue with food on site, with drinks on site. Yeah, Hollow Box took over their yeah. food, and they're doing... Oh, Burger Box is open. Yeah, Burger Box is open. It is open. I, I actually just saw a video yesterday. So if you look at Tuffy's Music Box, you can see an awesome show. Maybe there's a comedian, a band, and then is spill out into Tuffy's Courtyard, yep. have some delicious burger box. Yeah. Uh, there's that, uh, you know, uh, Suffering Bastard inside yeah, Tuffy's. Yeah, there's a tiki like bar a secret that's bar. hidden in there. You do need to make reservations for that, I think. Uh, or you might be able to slide in, but you'll have to check. Yeah, and of course, uh, we got West End and Celery City. Celery City courtyard is gigantic. Yeah, they just redid their stage. Again, they're always catering to you, your drinks, and live music. Um, Alestone, Alestone Brewing has some of the most delicious beer you will find in Longwood. Handcrafted beers and handcrafted food. They have a meatball sub that Maisie loves oh, yeah. and really good pizzas. Yeah, Monday through Thursdays, 50% off their pizzas. We've got the current seafood counter. There was a gentleman that left a message on our voicemail who said that he ate at the current four days in a row. Mm. That's fine with me. <laughs> I think that maybe you will want to branch out eventually, but man, The Current, if you want uh, really, really good seafood, The Current's got you covered. Get a margarita and a lobster roll? Yeah. I mean, that's a good That is a good uh, afternoon. Day. Salty Sisters, that is our friend Tiffany's bar. Um, you can go there. Again, you can get great pub food uh, and great specials on beers. And if you like, if you have a group of people that you need to entertain, our BDMs just had a pre-cruise meetup down there. Yeah, yeah. Look, man, we have venues for everybody. Let's talk about Cafe Da Vinci. Yeah, and the that's, land. That's my romantic venue. I say this all the time, but if you want to take your, your lady out on a date night, nothing, especially now that it's going to get cooler, nothing is going to beat Cafe Da Vinci De Land. Yeah, and they have unbelievable bands. Dan Reed has uh, curated. He's a musician. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so he, he's been he, doing it for so long, yeah. he gets awesome acts. Including his band. Sometimes his band plays there, yeah. the Del Clark band. They're really good, dude. Speaking of bands, um, you know, Dirty Laundry, Little Indies, Will's Pub. Yeah. Um, That's the hub, man. That is yeah. your number one local independent venue here in Orlando, Florida. If you like rock and roll, that's your place. You like hip-hop, that's your place. You like the metal, that's your place. Yep, and they're all attached to each other, so yep. uh, check out Dirty Laundry's right next door. And our newest watering hole, and probably one of the more classy ones, is Breeze Whiskey Bar and Lounge in Kissimmee. You can go there and check it out. Again, I've seen pictures online. It's a really, really nice place to kind of show out and have a romantic evening. Yep, go to TomandDan.com, click on the watering hole link and find all of our watering holes now to josh wolf so we walked out of that house we left every college memorabilia i ever had everything growing up i ever had every painting every book every piece of furniture everything we had brought with us our entire lives was gone we treated it like a fire and we started over from ground zero at age 45 no shit and they, you couldn't wash the mold off <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I've always thought you could. And that makes me a real you dumb blow person. It off. And here's yeah. the thing. So yeah. you, we were like, well, bleach it. And the mold people are like, that's not how it works with mold. So, and, and now there's a way to do things to clean it. But before, they were like, you're bringing spores with you. And you guys are both so sick. The only way to get healthy is you have to stop breathing it in. Wow. And, and, and there were some people like, you could probably do it. And probably wasn't enough for me because yeah, for yeah. me, health is number one. Sure. When your health is jacked, you don't think about anything else. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't get anything else done. And it was the most important thing. And we treat, can I tell you for a week, we kind of felt bad for you. We, we were like, what was me? But can I tell you, it honestly was the best thing that ever happened to me because it made me realize, oh, that's just stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It gives you really, perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. It really is just stuff. What? All this Boy, stuff. Boy, that does dial in health, doesn't it? Yo, like dude. when you're sitting on the yeah, door yeah. and because uh, like the interview I think I watched, you know, because I, I don't remember, what? I don't know where I'm at, but I was watching you tell the story and I was like, oh, okay, well, uh, shit, this on, is let, crazy. Let's start with yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Just, okay, go ahead. All right. We're already rolling. So okay. Whenever right, you right. Talk. <laughs> well, uh, with us in studio, Love this guy. he's going to be at the Orlando Funny Bone. Two shows tonight, two shows on Saturday. Yes, sir. Get your tickets. Uh, Funny Bone's a great venue. Was there last night. Kind of hungover right now. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an 
Orlando.funnybone.com. Uh, Josh Wolf is here. How you hey. doing, Josh? What's going on? Remember, late show tonight, uh, Mushroom Show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. um, There you go. Yeah. Well, who was there last night? Uh, we did a charity event. Uh, the Our lawyer sponsor, uh, Mo DeWitt. Yep, did the Mo his, Comedy Jam. Did his Mo Comedy Jam, and it's all for a great charity, and uh, a bunch of local comedians. It was uh, super fun. Yeah, yeah. For um, Yellow Brick Road. It's all they, a bunch of BDMs. They're cool. They make the wagons for the kids that are trapped in their, you know, their, in their hospital rooms. These wagons, you can put all of the different, you know, you know needs that the child has. You can yeah. kind of strap it on the wagon, and they can go anywhere. So you can get them outside. It's they can amazing. see the grandparents. Yeah, yeah it's dope. It's it's really really cool. Yeah, and um, so Josh, we were talking, and I believe we because we, me and Daniel looked, we had uh, you and your son Jacob in last August. August. Yeah, and yes. so we may have touched on the the mold problem you dealt with, but I don't remember when you just told me you were telling us about how yeah. you left all your possessions. That's why I behind. asked you this morning because I watched an interview and you were kind of breaking it down, and it is. Uh, talk about a complete life change. So, uh, but in let's just talk about it. So, how you started getting sick, and you were like, were you and your wife sick with like mysterious illnesses? And yeah, you know? we just we couldn't get healthy. We, I felt I wasn't as bad as my wife because I was traveling, but I oh. felt so much better when I got out of the house. But but I, I but I'm still now. It's a it's a trigger for me, dude. I, if I smell it when I walk into a building, I turn out. You just I, leave. I, man, I switch hotels in cities sometimes two, three times. It, so I have to go to a new build. It's, and, and Florida's real tough for me, dude. Yeah, because oh, if, it's mold crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's oh so wet. God. It's yeah. just all the time. So I have to find new hotels. Yeah. If it's 20, before 2020, I just, it's it, for health wise for me, yeah. it's just not worth it, dude. But, the we, we got a lot of eighty eights. We got a lot of ninety twos around here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety yeah, yeah. sixes. You're just talking hotel. about. Oh, you're we, talking about the people at breakfast sitting next. to These buildings are oh, so yeah. old. We oh. have some hotels that we just go in there and we'll just like put a little paint on them, put a flamingo on it. That's and it. Roll. That's it. It, it. But by the way, for some people, it doesn't affect them. Yeah. Or yeah. or if you look at it this way, okay. Th- this is the way it was explained to me. Some people's bodies, it doesn't affect them the same way. But also, some people, your body can fight it, but your body can only fight it until it fills up the tank. And then it spills over. Right. My, uh, there were so many bad things happening for my wife and I. She had these brown, weird brown circles under her eyes. Not okay. black, brown. And really? A little bubbly. And she, terrifying. Yo, yo, it was terrifying, dude. I literally picked her up. One night, she was screaming at the house, almost like she w- she was saying "fuck you" to the house, like talking. Oh God, it was driving her crazy, dude. But she could feel it, and I picked her up, and I said, "Get in the car." I said, "We're never coming back here." And we got it tested, and the mold guy was like, "Dude, it is bad in here." And I was like, "What do we do with the stuff?" And he said, basically, he said, "Some people will say you can clean it. I would tell you, you guys are so sick." Not to risk bringing anything with you. The best way to make sure you're healthy is to treat this like a fire and start over. And I said, deal. It was tough, dude, because there are some things. Like, I had these Doc Martens from the 90s in Seattle. I remember, I was like, I I wore these Doc Martens when I saw Pearl Jam with Neil Young at a 300-seat club. Yeah. No shit. And I remember dancing around in these, and I had all this memorabilia, all these things from the TV shows that I've been on. Were you a sentimental, like, yes. Yeah, because I, I, both am. my wife and I were. Yeah, I am. And we walked out of there, and for a week we felt bad. And then we woke up basically the same day, and I said, you know what? This is the best thing that's ever happened to us. That was just stuff. You know what's important? I love you. You and I are going to have a long life yeah. together. We'll find more stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. what's important is you feel better. And she was like, "Yeah." She was like, "I actually feel more like myself than I have in like three years." Was it immediate? Like you get out where and you guys are laying next to each other and like, okay, you that first night you wake up, are you like, yes? <sighs> uh, like, can you? It, 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 you do feel and whether it's whether it's just mental 
or whether it's real, we both felt different. Like three days in, we were like, "Oh my goodness!" Did did you s- wow man sell all your stuff? Did you just hire a company to like a junk removal and they threw it away? Like, well, did and, you and, s- uh, send Jacob over and, there? And, and real quick, <laughs> real quick. This is the one thing I wanted to ask yeah. you. This the 2022 appearance. There was no Jacob. You were in here, and you were thin. Yeah. You're always very yeah, in shape. I was, You're always. I was. But sick. you told me. And I don't know if you remember this. You told me, you go, something's going on with me. Their test, they don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. we remember. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And I remember, and they were like, and I, I remember, Josh I, I remember talking, I, did you hear him say that? And he's like, yeah, I was like. I was like 142 pounds. You were lean, dude, yeah. And lean they, is and, a nice way to put it. Yeah. Uh, Auschwitz is a nice yeah. way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know what was yeah. happening, right? Like that, so so that's when you were having it happen, right? Sort so, or, so, the mold... That was more, look, that was more, I had this crazy, I had a tooth crack. I'm old enough where they used to, where they put silver in my mm-hmm. mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I got one. I did not know, but I had crazy mercury poisoning. Jesus. And it was just, I couldn't put on any weight. It was doing crazy things to my body. It was a rough couple of years. Yeah, man. Plus, I mean, I, I'm not a conspiracy dude or, but I, the, um, you know, when you were getting the jabs, the jabs have a lot of mercury in them, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were, it was like a real tough combination. Yeah, yeah. Especially your body can only handle a certain amount. And yeah. if you're, if you're yeah. sensitive to it, you know, there's so many things. Yeah. that, And it's uh, also different for everybody. Yeah, yes. throw your chemicals off. So, like, so it's interesting getting rid of every possession you had. I mean, you're talking everything. You, Your Dude, clothes, all your pictures and shit. We walked out naked. I'm not kidding. We changed in the garage, and we walked out. Fuck. And with uh, sweatpants, we each had sweatpants, socks, shoes, t-shirt from Target. Walked out. Sweatpants. Let's go to the strip club. <laughs> yeah, that's all we got. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> They're good for friction. Let's roll. And it, it, they let couples in. You yeah. know what? Let, right? <laughs> yeah, but dude, the sweatpants show the stain. Dude, yeah. They do. You got the white ones. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Like I, I make the joke on the show that I'm like, I'm like, and this is stupid to say, but I'm like, it, it'd be interesting to go through the experience of uh, near death, so you gain the perspective of of life, and that perspective, I'm like, is super. I I talk to people that almost died, and then the the way they live their lives, I'm like, God, it seems like they got a gift because they saw how fucking fragile it is so but and most people never lose all their possessions at one time yeah unless there's a fire or something like to to choose to leave them behind is crazy and then you get this perspective of oh yeah all this shit that i collect my whole life is just not like yeah. you hold on to it you're like oh it means something and then when you lose it all that gives you like oh shit i'm free and then, like, so I feel like that's kind of a gift. Did you feel like that after? Yeah, man. The, I, honestly, the only things that I missed were pictures from college to show my kids, pictures from when I was younger. You know, it, it wasn't digital, so there aren't copies of right. these pictures, right? That's the only thing that was a bummer. But nothing close to a, much of a bummer is how we both felt for yeah, yeah, three right. years. It's yeah, like yeah. you can't even compare. It, it. There's no comparison at all. We think about it every day in <clears throat> Vegas. Uh, and and look, man, there are a lot of I have a lot of things right now that I like at, at my house. But I think about this all the time where I'll look at that and I go, I could throw that away tomorrow and I'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 because yeah. That, that perspective I could you got. Yeah, that's throw awesome. that away tomorrow and be fine. It's why things like traveling with Jacob, doing a podcast with him, yeah. that's, that's like, oh, these are the things that are important. Man, I've always thought if you have money to buy a thing or an experience, by the experience, yeah, sure. yeah, I like right, that. yeah, yeah, I do that. But after this happened, that couldn't have been more present for me, yeah, right. Where, because I was like, oh, this, this is just a thing. But these things that I've done, these experiences that I've had, they live forever. Yeah, yeah. Those right. Doc Martins, 
It wasn't the Doc Martens. It was the experience in the Doc Martens. Yeah, right. and you already have that. I yeah. have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that, yeah. right? It's a reframe. Yeah, yeah. and it's I can reframe. lie and go buy some Gar- Doc Martens and be like, these are the ones that I want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not going to feel yeah. the same. I've tried to do that. I've tried to do that. I had a green pair. Docs especially, I, I get dude. the new ones, and I'm like, hey, these aren't the same. No, dude, they, they changed the leather, I think. Yeah, well, they now they, now, and you could get these. They do have special docks now. You can order two kinds. You can order the kind that are made Did you in say China. Two kinds, like you're in Sopranos. Oh, two's kinds. <laughs> <laughs> you could order these two kinds, you guys. <laughs> but they, do, they have two. They have like ones you can buy that are uh, like Chinese, yep. and then they have the ones you can buy that are made in like in England, and they're like three times the price. So you can get them. But they they have That's to be made in the tiny factory in England and hand sewn by some bald that, man. I would have thought know. tiny factory hand sewn was China. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's big factory tiny people. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna, yeah, see, what a like, great <laughs> show on TLC. <laughs> <laughs> I was in that. Yeah, yeah, it's your that. video. I game almost got there. killed by a trubuchet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember when the little people almost got killed by a trubuchet? No. Yeah, they had a pumpkin chunker on the property. Yeah. And the the little person went out there to fire it, and him and his grandpa, oh, it walloped them good. <laughs> oh man, it took whack a bang. Yeah. <laughs> what is the exi- like? What if you were going to go by the book? What's the, by the book, little person? Uh, there's a dev- he think- says I'm by the book, <laughs> but that's no. just because he's angry. This week's been an angry. No, week. you're just close enough. You could say the M word. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but, the M- but only in rap songs when I'm doing karaoke. M word. Oh, oh, the M word. The M. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. I'm not sure you can say the N word. <laughs> I mean, just because he's short. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. But I do. But I do. <laughs> I thought that was a rule. You know, I do, and I say, I say, come stop me. Yeah. <laughs> Too small. You can't find me. Come find me. I'll be hiding in my in my treehouse. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'll just be in my treehouse, just yelling the n word. I'll be throwing t- cookies at you exactly. with the other elves. Come so, get me. So, Josh, speaking of perspective, you have another perspective I thought was interested or interesting. You told Mr. me earlier. Perspection is uh, perspective. Perspections be- because because you you travel with your, with your son Jacob. This is your and dream, you, and you do a show with this him. This is your dream. Um, you you told me you get to see your son and ha- what. His personality is like outside of your environment, yeah. and, and the you know around other people and stuff. And I, I think that's pretty interesting. And a lot of uh, parents don't get to see that. You know, they only see their their kids in their environment at home, or you know, holidays and shit. They don't get to see them interact with other people and strangers. And th- you know, that's pretty awesome. It's amazing because not only do we work together, so it'd be different if we just met at the club. And did stand up, and he went home. I still not sure I would get a great idea of who he is as a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we share hotel room. I don't let him get his own hotel room. Still, I like oh, I lo- I, I tell I him. Like I said that. the name of this tour is one room, two beds. Like, <laughs> I hate that. Um, I don't let him. It, well, we go, we eat, we work out together, nice. we go do things during the day. So even if he was putting on an act, there's only so long that act can last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And w- how I know he's himself is we get into it, dude. Sometimes, or he's, I, I, you know, there's some days I'm not feeling my best. He's not feeling his best. We might be short with each other, but. That's when you see who somebody is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so, I feel so privileged that I get to see him as an adult out in the world and to see how good of a dude he is. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah. To see you how know? good of a dude he is. Yeah, yeah. You, you it takes li- a lot to get that guy's eyes to light up. I mean, that is, no, <laughs> seriously, but that you're is like... my dream. You really yeah. are. I mean, like, that is... And, and, yeah, and it, that triggers me a little bit, man. It gives me goosebumps but like, it, hearing that shit. It's, it's good shit, too. It's like, we need more of this, like, I, good experience shit. I want to tell you that, you know, he and I do a podcast together, right? Yeah, Called yeah. Hey Man. Hey and Man. With, with three A's, because that's how I say it. Yeah, yeah. Put the three in there. Um, The... The... What I thought was going to be the best part about doing the podcast was just being able to hang out with him. Yeah. Can I tell you what has ended up being the best part is I have people come up to me in the meet and greets. Like, I had this dude come up to me in the meet and greet, and he hugged me. Not like TP hug, like tip to tip hug. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know that's when someone's... Yeah. <laughs> for real. Sure they love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really... Yeah. Not the TP, yeah, but yeah. the thing. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, do yeah, we yeah. know each other? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave back. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me put it in there. <laughs> but he tipped to tip me, man, and he um he, he I could feel him a little emotional. I go, "What's going on?" And he said, "You know, my son's 
25 years old. This is the first thing he's ever asked me to do with him before. And he oh, said, I want you to know that you and your son are making a difference. He, he and I listen to your podcast together. We've never done anything together. We're connecting in a way and talking in a way that we've never done it before. It's not just fathers, sons, mothers, daughters, brothers, sisters. Yeah. In a, it, we hear from more family members who are like, it's so cool to see your relationship play out in real time. It's not only inspirational, it's aspirational. Thank you for reconnecting me with this person in my family. Yeah. Yo, dude, it's been... It, not to be sappy because I know I'm a comic and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But y- you get to a point in your life at some age where you're like, you know, dude, I would love to make a difference in a little way. Yeah. yeah and yeah. how am I going to do that telling dick jokes? Right. And it turns out this podcast and the relationship with Jacob has really made a difference for people. And it's been so cool, dude. Been so cool. That That is unbelievable because you realize you're like, I can't believe like uh, parents are bonding with their kids over my experience. And in a lot and, of... And it's, it's not corny bullshit either, if that makes sense. I don't know not, if you're yeah, picking yeah. up what I'm laying yeah. down. It's like... I, it's not there's fake. There's so much of this... You know, fa- like, and, and also, admittedly, we as, as society shit on like family life a lot. You know, like, oh, my family's coming. Family. family. Yeah. It, be, it does. It becomes like a cliche. Yeah, and I, and I hate it. So when I see stuff like this, I'm like, "That's a good shit," you know. Like, yeah, and, and it's not the corny, inspirational bullshit that doesn't mean anything. It's authentic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's real. And, and, and then, like, but I'm sure it makes people, uh, like, other dads out there, even think to themselves, like, "Man, why don't I have a relationship with my son?" Because there's yeah, a lot of, that. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially like you know, uh, you know, the the older generation, it just didn't exist. Like I, right. I think about that too. Like I think about like dads in the '50s and shit, and how much they missed out too. Like just being uh, like not present for, for their family and just never being involved. Like you know, like, oh, like, there's no better like, feeling. God, I mean, it, like, like what you get from Jacob, I'm sure he gets from you. Like I miss my dad. I'm like, yeah. man, there's nothing like it. You can't even describe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know. I think uh, 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 as parents or dads, you know, the trap I think you fall into is that you are really trying to mold them into somebody until instead of allowing them to be who they're going to be and 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 being interested in what they're interested in. I don't give one shit about hip hop and rap music. Jacob does. We talk about it in the car all the time. Yeah. Mm. Why? Because. Yeah. Uh, I want to know what he's interested in. Yeah, I yeah. want him talking to me about what he's interested in. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, like, you want to hear what he loves. It doesn't matter if you love you. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know what he's not going to like? The Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know what? Have you we, showed we, him? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Timothy B. Schmidt <laughs> is an amazing bass player. And not even an I mean? original member. Right, you know what I mean? Hold but on, like, don't even say that. I'm cursing <laughs> Jacob. He's not even here. <laughs> he hates the Eagles. We were in New Zealand, and I said, we were talking about hip hop. We're in a car with a, this dude, who our, our term, tour manager over there, and um, this dude named Heath, who is the f- best. And we were driving through New Zealand, through these scenic, Whoa. just gorgeous places. And I said something about the Eagles, and Jacob was like, "I don't even, I don't even really know who they are." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Dude, I guarantee you, you know at least six of their songs." Oh yeah. And he was like, "Nah." And I played Hotel California. He goes, "Yeah, I heard this one." And then I played like four in a row that I thought for sure he was like I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what that is. And it hurts yeah, yeah. every every and every time you cue one up and he doesn't know it, how bad does it hurt? He said to me, he goes, "Is that a Ford commercial?" And I was like, "Fuck you, maybe." <laughs> <laughs> It he, might be. <laughs> they might have sold yeah. it. I don't think yeah. it's money. They're grumpy old men yeah, now, dude. right? Like, like oh, a lot, some they're going to be at the Sphere in Vegas, which is where you I going? live. I'm not going to go see them. I went and saw the dead. What do you think of the Sphere? Give us a review from somebody that's a local. Is it okay? Is it amazing? I'm going to tell you. Were you mushroomed out? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, too many here's the truth. I if going into there, if you had said name. Five dead songs that you've heard before, I would have named two. Yeah. Touch of Grey and whatever the Driving That Train High on Cocaine song mm-hmm. is. Right? Oh, right, right, right. Casey Jones. I don't know. He, by the way, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know any of their music. They played two hours of music I'd never heard before. 
top five concert I've ever seen in my life. Whoa! Was it because of the venue? Venue, drugs, the amount of 60-year-old women without bras. <laughs> it was... A- <laughs> <laughs> I do like them long. Yeah, God, if I'm on mushrooms and there's long titties around me, I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I just drag them over me. And they get longer on mushrooms. <laughs> it was amazing. You know what was also crazy? I walked in, I was high. Yeah. When the visuals started, they were so overwhelming. I, this is going to sound real weird. I didn't feel nearly as high. There was so much happening. <laughs> Like, it took your buzz away. <laughs> because I, you know, that does make sense. It's it, almost like you're high, and then they delivered exactly what your mind was doing at the time, so you got it. There was so, 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 so much yeah. happening that it took away, not in a bad way, yeah, yeah. but then when I walked outside, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, I'm high. <laughs> it, 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 this is an awesome review. Yeah, I like yeah, that. This no, is like uh, an actual review. But inside, dude... It, it, no, I'm, the the Eagles are there. I'm not going to go see because what are they going to show? Black and white pictures of birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? That was, that was a horribly mean thing to say. God damn. <laughs> but but next year, my buddies, uh, the Zach Brown band, they're playing oh, there. Okay, there and a hundred percent. Not only because I think li- if you've never seen them live, live they are like they are. Oof, so good. Even if you're like chicken fried, dude. Right? Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so He's great. He's got such a killer voice. Honestly, right? It's so good, right? So good. Yeah. I, I remember when I was touring with Cable, Larry the Cable Guy. We were playing in Hollywood, Florida, and um, so at the time, Zach was represented by the same people that I was represented by. That Cable Guy was represented by. Okay. And so they were like, "Hey, this dude Zach Brown wants to come by and say, hey." He wants to talk to you about maybe writing some funny songs to Cable Guy. So it was him and the drummer, Chris, and they were backstage, and he gave me a five-song EP Whoa. that I still have. That's cool. And Because I was doing a show on radio uh, on Sirius at the time. Yeah, yeah. And he said, will you play the first track? It's called Chicken Fried. I think it's going to be pretty big. And I was like, yeah. And I remember playing it on the radio show, and I was like, because I, I, like, I wanted to listen to it for the first time on the show. And I remember playing Hit and Stop, and I was like, that is a banger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This that, is going to be yeah. This is going to be, because at yeah. the time, I wasn't the biggest country music fan. And even for me, I was like, this is just a great yeah. song. You know what boxes to check. Yeah, and it has them. It has all yeah. of them. And so, but I've known him for a while. Wow. To watch what's happened with him and his band has been it, just crazy. It, it is insane seeing someone before they're famous and then all of a sudden they're big. We, Dude. Je- Jelly Roll was in here yeah. like years ago. 2018. That's a guy I did not foresee as being the uh, guy famous. Nicest <laughs> man Jelly, ever Roll, Jelly Roll played Save Me for the first time live on my show in Nashville at Zany's. Really? Oh. So I had hooked up with him. He he was like, man, I got this song. I was like, you want to come down? He was like, absolutely. Because he, he had he'd been hooking up with, not hooking up with, but he had hooked up with my buddy Brendan Schaub, and Brendan was like, you should meet this dude, Jelly Roll. Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, hey, I have this song on YouTube that has a gazillion views, but I've never been able to play it live because we released it over COVID. Do you mind if I play it live tonight? So he played it just him wow. and an acoustic guitar. This was a crowd... Sold out crowd for people who were there to see me. Yeah. Right? He came on saying, save me, in the middle of a comedy show, and 300 people who didn't know who he was, I bet you, no joke, 100 of them were weeping by the end of the song. It was the most powerful live experience as an artist I've ever had to be in the middle of a comedy show, stop down, do an acoustic version of a song like that in front of a crowd of people who didn't know who you were, and to affect a third of them like that to tears was, as an artist and as a performer, the most amazing thing I've ever seen live. It was crazy. What, what do you think that is? He's so real. Is it? Yeah. Real? And, and that song, if... Look, if you're singing it the way he sings it, and you connect to it the way he connects to it, in a such a real way that those lyrics mean something to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they, if you're somebody in the audience who that those lyrics 
me like affect you or oh that is me or i know somebody who needs that that is speaking directly to your heart yeah, and it yeah. was so powerful it made me dude this is what i love about art and live performances i love the fact that we can affect people like that in such a fucking positive way yeah. it's so cool i as a younger dude i never really uh, appreciated that stuff but yeah. now dude to get on stage and be like how dope is it that i just spent an hour making people forget about whatever's happened in their life and they'd laugh the whole time yeah it's yeah. so fucking cool yeah, yeah. the it's mushrooms like an, help but yeah. it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's an energy exchange too right? yeah dude yeah like i i believe in that i like that you know like i like the you know the the i like feeling things you know like that's part of my life you know i'm a pretty emotional person yeah so uh highs and lows to me are like that's part of my boat ride you know yeah i mean uh you guys do it here people turn on your show to forget and have a good time the but escape, lately we've escape. gone horribly political <laughs> oh my god yeah, yeah, that's what i'm going to call whatever the fuck. i don't know <laughs> You know, no, I, we I, don't do any I of that. No, yeah, me I, neither, yeah. dude. I, it's like fucking hey, I can't even I can't even be around yeah. people that are like the whole like either side. That's my identity. I'm like, get yeah. out, get away from me. It's what I love the most Run. about Can I tell you it's what I love, love the most about living in Vegas? Nobody talks about it. Oh, oh really? Nice. Nobody talks about it. That's nice. Nobody talks they may in behind closed doors, yeah. but nobody talks about it. Can't do it around Neil. I wonder why. Like, yeah. really <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I wonder We're why a uh, Guy Fieri Burger Bar, like, you know, with the steak SDK. Yeah. yeah. Get out of here. Shut, knock that no, shit off. People are gambling and drinking and dancing. It's it's They're good time. in an escape yeah. scenario. Yeah. So they right. want to escape, in escape town. I guess we do get a little bit of it down the road. You know, when you're down yeah. by the resorts and you're up at Volcano Bay, the, people aren't talking about But I don't about even get it in my neighborhood. I don't get Get it out in the just in the suburbs. People huh, are just not. That's awesome. It's a, it's the thing that I found about Vegas. And look, I could be wrong. Maybe it's just people I'm hanging out with. But it feels truly as the most as independent state where people are like do what you're gonna do. I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do. And let's just not talk about it. Yeah. I wonder if that has to do with the fact that it's just in the middle of a fucking desert. And then it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, it might as well be an island. You yeah. Know yeah. I mean? like, it kind of is. Or you go to Vegas, and then you, right outside of Vegas, you're like, oh, there's nothing here. <laughs> like, this yeah. is just an oasis in the middle of a goddamn nowhere. Yeah. And uh, it does seem like you're kind of an island. And then you, it, Vegas is kind of like island life. Yeah. You're like, hey, whatever happens out there, yeah. fuck it. We're our own thing. I've only been once. Loved it. I thought it was super You've fun. You've only been once? One time with this guy. We did to a podcasting convention there for. Remember when <laughs> Stitcher was a thing? Yeah. <laughs> we went and, and to the Stitcher Awards. Oh, and, yeah. uh, uh, and who was hosting uh, that wrestler? Oh, um, uh, Chris Jericho was hosting. Yeah, and he was choice. fucking hammered. <laughs> yeah, 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 and then they had this before. sex lady up there, and she was talking about dildos, and she shouldn't have been, and they were like yelling at her. And then they like, yanked her off the stage. They're like, for a comedy podcast of the year, uh, a mediocre time with Tim and Doug. They did say Tim and Doug. They called me Doug, and I was fucking mad. I stood all like, yeah. you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and yelling at her, because they all. They were like, we, yeah, we, we then, traveled far from yeah, this we, <laughs> we were nominated. But the, the person that won, they're like, uh, Tom, Tim and Doug, fuck them, who cares who yeah. they are? And the winner is who was the Dave mayor? Chappelle doesn't even have a fucking pocket. <laughs> yeah. like, it was like, it was they, like you know, like they, they, Yeah, it was like somebody, the most powerful person in the world. <laughs> and I was mad. And then yeah. you went into a porta potty that had like 40,000 turns in it. It was a bad night. Why? I'm stunned that you haven't been back to Vegas. I haven't. I, I went one time. I very much enjoyed it. Why don't we plan a trip oh, to the sphere? I, 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 oh, hey. <laughs> I, now we're talking. I, I have been wanting to go to Let's Vegas. Fear it up, dude. I've been wanting to travel. I'm a, I like gambling. No sphere. Uh, I like sports gambling. Me too. Yeah, Who's yeah. your lock this week for football? Well, it's, oh, it's funny. Now you've done it. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, now you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what a Hellraiser when you get yeah. the combination yeah. right? This motherfucker, brrr, big boner. I, his pins well, come out of his head. I loved uh, teasing the Bengals down and then teasing the Cowboys up to eight and a half and yeah. the Bengals down to two and a half. Although, yeah, don't this, look at me when you're saying this. Look at him. Although, this I, isn't my world. I, I, Jamar Chase has got to play, right? I mean, there's no way they let this motherfucker this sit out. This is the baby. stupidest <laughs> decision of all time, and the Bengals have made a lot of dumb ones. But how you're not... This is your chance to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, Joe Burrow looks and better than ever. he's not going to get less expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next year, he's going to be more expensive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So what the 
fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. A- and you know him and his agent are like, if you play and hurt yourself, you're fucked. You know what I'm saying? Like you blow your ACL, ACL out, yeah. and that will cost you thirty million dollars. Yeah, you know, like you cannot risk thirty million dollars. Be more, not even for your family. For because a lot of people think like, oh, this person is being selfish. This person has a lot of people depending on them. No, and, you know, a business. And, 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 Football players yeah. have shelf lives, dude. Yeah, yeah. They don't have. It's not a thirty-year career of making thirty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, not thirty million dollars a lot. I could l- work one year and be like, I'm good, <laughs> yeah, retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. I'll figure the rest of it out. Yeah. Right, but 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 the risk of injury is present all the time. Yeah, yeah. And I'm on side team player over team owner. Yeah. You're a billionaire. I'm never on the side of billionaires. Yeah, I'm just not. It, but you know what's interesting in the Cincinnati case? Is if I were that, a billionaire, though, I would be on that side. The, me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think I, I feel I. Well, I'd, I'd be like team be billionaire. Very, yeah, would be yeah. very upfront. Th- yeah. th- this is why Cincinnati this. Uh, uh, does this kind of shit is because the Cincinnati is a family owned. Yeah, the like mm-hmm. yeah, the like uh, a legacy. Yeah, the uh, um the original owner of the Browns How long and the Bengals. It? Like he owned both teams, and then he passed it on to his son, who yeah. took the Bengals. So like this guy is not a Walter. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, his wealth is because of the team's wealth is because now the Cincinnati Bengals is worth $6 billion. But back when he inherited it and right. his dad, it was fucking a million dollars. You yeah, know, right. like the amount that uh, the NFL teams have, uh, uh, va- like the the value that they have now compared to the, even 20 years sure. ago is insane. But this is what I'm saying. The, t- the amount of TV money, they now yeah. get TV money from six networks. And that gets spread across the teams evenly. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's you can't cry poor to me. You just no, yeah, can't yeah. cry poor to me. Yeah. It, it, it's why. Look, man. I as I've gotten older, you don't get my blind. I'm a Boston sports fan, and you know you wake up. You are born and raised Bruins, Celtics, Patriots, Red Sox. You mm-hmm. do not deviate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No matter what, and I'm not that dude anymore. You know who I am. You don't get my blind loyalty. Like the Red Sox, who were my team, dude, I'm a baseball guy. I haven't rooted for them in three years. Really? And I'll tell you why. They have the highest ticket price in baseball. They uh, have one of the richest owners in baseball. And they are easily in the top ten of richest franchises in baseball. But they, the last couple of years have been getting outbid by teams like the Padres. They're not spending money. Well, fuck you. If you're not trying... If, and people are like, you got to be loyal. Oh, if you had a girlfriend who fucked around on you, but just because you've been with her since high school, you're going to stick with her? If No. you got to put in what I'm putting in. If you're not putting it in, I'm not putting it in. So the last couple of years, I haven't, lo- I haven't watched a Red Sox game. I haven't oh. watched a baseball game. Have you picked another team at all? Or I'm you- on the free. I'm, I'm ready. You're ready. I'm a wow. free agent. So if you, if you, I'm in for a team that's trying to win. That's it. When Vegas gets a baseball team, I'll be on that bandwagon. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they talk about it. You're, it is. We're supposed to get one called the Dreamers. <laughs> the Hi. Worst Hi, we're name. the Dreamers. That's not really the name, right? <laughs> well, that's what they want. It sounds like a cult. Hi, we're the Orlando Dreamers. Who, 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 what's the mascot like going to be? Doug Henning. Yeah, it's Doug Henning. Oh my, the mascot is going to be some guy who looks like Kenny G. <laughs> He's got a like, <laughs> top hat and a monocle. He's like, Dream come true here. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they only did that. They're like, we want that Disney. Money, yeah. yeah <laughs> you, know, yeah. Like, you name your, you're like a Disney who sponsored this shit. Hell, the uh, rats. That'd so be awesome, Orlando rats. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one, right? Yeah, rooting around in there. Josh, you watch any minor league ball? I just got into baseball. I love going Three to minor ago. league games. We threw it, my Jacob and I threw out the first pitch in Vegas. That's dope. The Aviators, that Vegas. I love the minor league ballparks. Yeah, there's no bad seats. They're the, fun, right? Yeah, and the the goal of the game is let's make sure these people have a good time. Yeah, yeah, they do. I, I want to the, see the Savannah Bananas. Yeah, uh, we, we, we saw them. them. How was it? Uh, it's amazing. We know. In fact, we'll hook you up. I'll connect you with their announcer. Is a very good friend of ours. His name is the Young Professor. You might have seen the guy in the sequin outfit. Yeah, that's our buddy. Can I wear a sequin to the show? I'm to sure the, he probably yeah, yeah. he would probably we, want you and Jacob in the in the act. I'm in. All right. Well, yeah, I'll yeah, make that yeah. connection. We'll, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll make that happen. He's them. the nicest guy you'll ever want to meet. Yeah, you know, and he's a teacher, too, uh, which makes him even cooler. Because, yeah. like, this dude, like, he slaves for the kids, and then in his part time, like, he goes and he flies around the nation making but other I kids happy. I think now it's full time. Yeah, it's so big. I think it is full time. Yeah, yeah. They sell out yeah. 
They're, Everywhere. They're about to start doing fucking uh, Major League uh, baseball. Well, the biggest stadiums. Stadium, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. their Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. Oh, yeah. Do, do you know I, I, I sung Take Me Out to the Ball Game for the seventh inning stretch in Chicago? No shit. So when I was touring with How'd Chelsea. You, that's crazy, okay, dude. Okay, this is a great story. So I'm touring with Chelsea, and we're there, and they're like, we think it might get rained out. And so we're sitting up in the box, because she was throwing out the first pitch, and then we were going to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Cool. So, uh, we think it's going to get rained out, and there's clouds, and they're like, look, we're going to give it 15 more minutes, but we think we're going to call it. And so we're up in the box, and, and she said to me, she was like, hey, you want to take that ecstasy? I'm like, yeah, let's take it. <laughs> <laughs> so, as soon as we swallow the pills, the clouds part. And they're like, it looks like the game's going to go on. And we were like, oh, <laughs> no. So sh- by the time first pitch, she's just starting to roll. We we rocked out of the field. Her both of our eyes are like raccoons. <laughs> we <laughs> you guys look like Funko Pops. Yeah, we got the big Funko Pop eyes. We <laughs> and so she throws a three bouncer to the plate, something like that. <laughs> by the time we get up in the seventh inning, we're f- fucked up. And so you know when they start take me out of the ball game, take me out of the ball game. It's like when you sing happy birthday at a party. If the person who starts it starts out too low, happy. everybody's happy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I'm talking about? It fucks it up for everybody. So, Chelsea started a little too low, so we were all, oh, hey, <laughs> and it was so bad, they didn't even boo us. We, we were just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it might have been the worst. And she walked out of there. She was like, I was expecting you to carry me because I do sing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was musician. like, you started low. I didn't know what to do. You started yeah. I felt like Costanza. You started yeah. low. <laughs> when uh, and then where do you go from there? Do you go back up to the box or? Unfortunately, we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I've uh, never. Funny. Yeah, I've never been to a baseball game like completely inebriated. I've only uh, been to one baseball game. I went to Truist. So I'm a Braves fan. Yeah. So I saw the Braves play. There. That's a man. The the whole like battery area there and the shopping and they've kind of made it super like, cool. Yeah, it's not like baseball. It's like you're going to the mall and a sporting event broke out and you watch a smart it. way to do it yeah it's cool man yeah. it's, they got like bars and clubs and that's the thing is like that's the way baseball used to be such a purist sport that you were like they kept to like the this is the way we've always done it and they it took them a long time to get modern including the stadiums but if you can make it more of a party atmosphere like i'm sure you would go again because it wasn't just like oh i hate baseball oh yeah it was it felt fun oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. i do like baseball but like, even my daughter who's not the biggest baseball fan like uh, for a 9 year old she was like this is the greatest place on earth yeah. and then my wife is a baseball fan too but she liked the idea that they they had there wasn't anything you couldn't do there. There yeah. wasn't any food you couldn't eat there. It was like a mall. It's a mall. It's a great idea. Yeah, and, smart. and the ticket prices, not to go back to what you're saying to rub it in, weren't bad. Yeah. You know, the Braves, they kind of do it right, you know, and some franchises, you know, do it's it smart. a good job. It's really smart to keep, you, honestly, dude. So I, I, my, with my shows, I told my agent, and, and he's not super happy about it, I said, dude, you always got to have. Tickets for under thirty dollars. I said I remember not being able to afford a fifty dollar ticket. Yeah, and so and not every ticket's going to be thirty dollars, but I'm always going to have tickets for people who, like me, were in a spot in their life or raising kids or couldn't afford ticket for him and his wife. I'm always going to have those tickets, and it's important for sport teams to do the same thing. That's how you build fans. So you can take your family, dude. How much would it cost for you to take your family to a football game? Oh my god! Oh, I mean, like well, he's got more people, so he's gonna. But but this is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Like for four of us to go, like it becomes insane. Parking, every... food, oh, yeah. tickets. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah, went yeah. up the road to watch, you know, a game in Tampa, you'd you'd be paying. Yeah, I mean, the I, now if I went down to Miami, the Dolphins never notoriously uh, it's hard for them to sell tickets. Although now it's probably way different yeah. than it was because I remember like. 
like you guys I, got a good 15 point. years ago going when it was um, uh, Jimmy Buffett uh, sponsored. Oh, Land yeah. Shark. Yeah. Yeah. Up, up. And it was, there was barely yeah. any of that. But, you know, shit, we're in Margaritaville. 15 years ago is so different than it is now. And because the, the media is so much more powerful for these live sporting events, because now that's the only live TV anybody's watching. Crazy, right? Yeah. So, so their it's marketing bananas. power is so fucking insane because they are like, they hold like, hey, we're the only thing people are watching live anymore. The rest of the world's yeah. on demand, yeah. and and we capture an audience live. So pay us. Well, comedians money. are trying. <laughs> comedians yes, are trying to yes. bring back the live, oh, you know, uh, thing. You know, yes, we're getting yes, some yes. of that. I think it's cool. Yeah, me too. And it also kind of, like it for whatever okay. reason extremely triggering to me when it's like you're doing just you live, and the rest of the world's watching it. Woo. So it's puckers, amazing. Pucker's my asshole. I love bit, it, man. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, l- uh, speaking of that, let's talk a little business real quick because I'm curious about uh, YouTube and uh, and I'm curious about what you've seen as you've uh, built your following and your subscribers. So, like when we started podcasting, you know, now uh, it, this fucking was killing me the other day. I was thinking, I was like, ah, oh, it's gonna be 2025. I'm like, man, in 2029, like four years, uh, you know, in four years we're gonna be celebrating our 20 year podcast anniversary That's amazing. which is i'm like yeah, 20 like years either, we start, <laughs> like it sounds crazy because we started dude. in 09 20 you know. years of podcast 09 was early on you guys jumped ship into the right arena early yeah early. And, and that was the only reason of our yeah. that we were able to go independent is because we started early and which is a lot of like because we're you pretty know. bad at it <laughs> but we got in early you know yeah. like so, and that's the thing <laughs> we're not very good but we're here yeah, yeah. and you can't it's the Mark, it's yeah. the Mark Marin theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, it doesn't matter how big of a douchebag I am. I started first. Exactly. <laughs> Both our legs. Both our legs. Yeah, yeah. If, if you sleep in the parking lot, yeah. you'll be in the front row. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, so the uh, so you've got a, a huge subscriber following oh, on yeah. YouTube. One point six million yeah. is gigantic. Now it's funny because like ten years ago, uh, one point six million was viewed differently than it is now. Because I feel like sure. now it's so much more valuable because there's so much there's so much more shit, mm-hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's so diluted. So I'm curious, like when you have a YouTube following like that, like, do you constantly get hit up from companies wanting to personally advertise or, oh, like, right. somehow, like, you know, because now you... Let's collaborate. Like, you, you, you've you got you know, like a, a million sort of six followers. And, like, that shit is valuable. Yeah. And then I'm sure it attracts a lot of attention. Like, we get hit up all the time uh, by random... Yeah, they're like, like, why are you still doing this? <laughs> 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 I'm watching Josh Wolf right now. Why are you still doing it? I'm like, we yeah. don't know. And, and Don't watch Josh. And they're, and they're just coming across our downloads through Libsyn or whatever. And you got tons of companies like, hey, well, like, uh, can we collaborate in some way? You know, just random right, right. websites. But uh, like, uh, how do you handle that with your YouTube? I um, am kind of precious about it. I Good. only advertise. So I'm not hurting for money. Yeah. So you're not going to get me to advertise something that I'm not going to use. Some bullshit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Good. just it. So if I'm not using it or I don't believe in it product, I'm just not going to. I've been hit up by like a beer company. I don't, dr- I don't drink. Yeah, yeah. So why am I going to tell other people? No, I, I right not now. Not even Hulk Hogan's All American Lager? Uh, no. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> is that made up. with his sweat? It's, it's around here. Yeah, you got the, yeah, I know you don't drink, but you, just, you know. I, so I, but I do, uh, I work with this company called Best Day Brewing. They're this non alcoholic. Oh, nice. But, but the, the best tasting beer, but also non a that's I something that. I tasted it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm on board for this. Yeah, yeah. And it's a small company. Cool. He didn't sell out to Anheuser Busch. I like him. I know him personally. Is it the biggest sponsor I could get? Nope. It, as a matter of fact, is it probably well below the value? Yep. But I like the guy. I like the dude. That's awesome. A friend of mine who's been who's working with them now. And so this is what I'm doing. Like I said, I. I it, everything for me can't just be about what's the most money. Yeah, yeah. That's not going to bring me the most happiness. Yeah, no, of course. They just, they, you know, and then... We're sad now because that is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, God, you, 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 you go, no, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happiness! But, <laughs> but, <laughs> you deflated a little bit when you said money is not... Like, we both are like, oh, like, we, like Dad yelled at us and we're like, we've been doing this fucking wrong because, man, I will get all the buddies. Yeah, oh, I just, but I, I just can't... 
I just can't give a read for something that I'm not going to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not listen. And your your audience will know is bullshit, and that's the oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So your audience is like, wait a minute, you don't fucking drink. Or you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't <laughs> order from <laughs> Sherry's Berries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you so, know, so, like, so it actually does you harm. You know, yeah. because you come on, disingenuous. Hold on, hold on. But they are delicious berries. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom and Annie <laughs> cherry berries. I'm going to send that to you. I'm going to send it to you. That's it to hilarious. Trying to get those berries. But, but this is the thing for me. One of, my, one of the things about my brand that I do try to push is authenticity, sure. right? So if I said I'm authentic but drink this beer, then I'm, I'm pushing out two different messages. Yeah, you got yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, you're canceling everything out. Yeah. You're ruining it. Oh, and then the, the last question I wanted to ask you, and, and it had to do with uh, when, when you first got in here, or we're like, where's Jacob? And he's like, oh, he's flying in. He can't make it. <laughs> and then you started to bitch a little bit. You're like, <laughs> you're like, and then he's asking me, are we doing media? <laughs> you're like, so uh, so that got me thinking, because I'm, I'm constantly, and we had a conversation about my sons last time. I'm like, I, I, I'm tr- trying to ingrain some, like, the importance of hard work and work ethic and the grind and what work means and stuff and they're like they're tired of hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? i don't have to do any of this naturally <laughs> mine is uh yeah she's got the natural monday grind. through friday five hours an afternoon dance uh what it's insane she, she works she, out she works out on her own. Like, so you don't really have a dance body no, me? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. His daughter got it. She got it. She got it. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Hold on a second. You should see me roll around. <laughs> no, roll around, I believe you can do. John. It's. <laughs> I'm a good roller. Yeah, I John. believe you can stop, drop, and roll. But I, John, I'm a it's, semicircle. <laughs> it, it's insane. And it was like uh, Daniel's daughter. It literally she has a job at the she dance. Does. She's nine years old. On Monday, she's a, uh, a teacher's helper. And so they, she does that before her five hours. And they give her money off the, the, the cost of the... It, yeah, she has like a little high thir- side hustle. 30 hours a week yeah. with a job. She Saturday, was born this way. Sunday, yeah, she's just yeah, like, like, Daniel, like a mom. Like Daniel's not whipping her to do this. No. Like, she wants to I haven't do this. seen her in days. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which by the way, I, I realized I, when, I, when I saw Daniel's daughter and I've seen her her entire life, I'm like, oh, this is how Olympians are made. Yeah. Like, people get... A, they, they're born she's, with a fucking uh, a drive and a work ethic that can't be stopped and, sh- and self-motivated. Yeah. She's and, an interesting gal. And, and so and I tell Dana all the time, like, you fucking hit the lottery of you know, my son's... Well, I did and I didn't, you know, because so it's, something, it's something that I support. It's not what I would have chosen. You yeah. know I would have chosen drums. You know yeah. I would have chosen guitar. Yeah. Singing. Yeah. Uh, things that I'm into. Uh, writing music. She chose dance. It's her thing. I support it as much as humanly possible, but I, there's a lot of time I don't get with her. But it sucks sometimes. It's also super cool, dude. You're talking about art anyway. Oh, absolutely. And she does get to express, express. herself yeah. the way you would banging on the drums. She gets to and dance, which is super cool. You're still speaking the same language. Yeah, yeah, totally. And she, But she's just like, that's her thing. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I did luck out. It wasn't like, she just found it one day and it was just like, this is, I love this. And I'm like, okay, lucky. Yeah, but it is lucky though. Yes. When, when you're artistic, but then you also have the grind in you and then that can help. That's you. how help stars you. are born. Yeah. You know, and I'm curious, like when you talk to your son about the grind of stand up comedy, of the entertainment industry, because it is, and you've seen it throughout your whole career, and you've done it, and you've seen everybody that's been successful has. I mean, shit, everybody who comes in here that is a touring comedian that has a long career, they, there's a reason. There's a reason. It's the grind that they have internally. Like, do you? try to instill that into Jacob or do you just uh, sit back and not put too much pressure on like making sure he I does that I learned early on this is my belief that kids learn more from watching you than from you giving them a dissertation you know if I think about back when I was a kid as soon as my dad went into a life talk my brain went <laughs> right and I, all i just i could see his mouth moving but all i could think was when's he gonna shut the fuck up <laughs> when's yeah. he gonna stop talking holy shit is he still saying the same words over and over again <laughs> yeah, yeah so that's how my son's working yeah. <laughs> i see it in their eyes josh <laughs> so all i could do is hope that he's watched and still sees the way i carry myself and the road to success i've had those conversations with him and I've ever as soon as I end, I think to myself, that didn't land one 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Not one bit. All I can hope is that he can watch me. He's made some choices, man, that I know are bad choices. And I think when he makes them, he can realize himself. Ooh. Yeah, he bought NFTs, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of those friends. They're yeah. all like, oh, you want to buy them? I'm like, fuck you, man. You're a fucking moron. You're not an artist. Yeah, that shit was never yeah. doing nothing. Is that a dinosaur? Why am I buying a dinosaur? It's a gorilla wearing something. It's a cartoon. It's not even a real yeah. cartoon. <laughs> those were the dumbest. <laughs> Anyways. But, but, yeah. So I just, honestly, man. The most, the best I can do is just try to show him, yeah, yeah and yeah. hope he picks up on it. That's that's it. Like you can't force it down their throats. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. not gonna eat it. Yeah, but then I think a Tiger Woods dad. And- <laughs> <laughs> he is so obsessed with but, Tiger Woods okay. dad. But Tiger Woods also, <laughs> he's he's yeah. self driven, crazy. You know, that's what people don't realize. Though. But but it wasn't just talking; it was doing. Yeah, yeah. He did make him go to the course and do. Yeah, yeah. Do it, it look. Remember, but just forever, Tiger Woods. Remember Todd Marinovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's those people no, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I, I, all I can do is show them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that makes sense. And that, and that's it. And, and 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 tell them, you know, if you if you want to be successful, don't do what you're doing. No, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Change course right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, you ask him in as a question. Do you want to be successful? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. How old are your kids? Yeah. They are nine and ten. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty young. But yeah. I would. What do they like to do? They don't like to do nothing. Well, he <laughs> well, says no, that, but he also my does, youngest, my yeah. nine year old. He likes to do like he he he's out there. He he likes to break dance, which was uh, his break dancing was last night. So and he uh he, you know he's interested in things. Yeah, he is. My my oldest is kind of like me, but I was like this when I was a kid. I wasn't in into like team sports or like I wasn't into the clubs in high school right. and shit. Kind of shy, right? Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah, yeah. uh want to hide. I didn't have a motivation, kid, you know, like. You know, uh, you know, like you know, hide behind your hair, kind of a oh emo. Vibe. Yeah, but, but also I didn't get super the, artistic. I didn't get the uh, the grind and the work ethic until older. You know, what ten I'm seems yeah. pretty young yeah, to yeah. worry about their work ethic. I know, I know. You know, in nine too, I would just man. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, at ten and nine, have fun with them. Yeah, it yeah. only oh, happens. That's what I do, only mind. happens once. And they'll they'll figure it out. And if not, you'll just support them for the rest of their life. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what he wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he wants. Because then the dream stands. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, I want to build a business and my sons work for me. Yeah. Like the old school. Like, we are like you are doing. Like, like my daughter. But then they don't show up for work and I, I make excuses for them. And then uh, people are like, where's Max and Tommy? I'm like, ah, oh, they, yeah, they're some sick, other. Man, they got COVID. <laughs> there's some thing. They I'm got... still paying him Max salary. Max is break dancing <laughs> in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, it's always yeah, a pleasure. Man, we love you having in. you in, and we appreciate you, uh, the fact that you come in and uh, do the show. Because you know, as, we, uh, as yeah. we talked about before, it's definitely a gift, man. You know, we we don't take it lightly. We appreciate it. Yeah, but I appreciate you guys, and and it and and you guys are so good at what you do, and it's always such a great flowy conversation. You're not people who are like write five things down. We have to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> do you, you, people do that? Oh know, my god! It, it's 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 like it's, how'd you get this job? By the way, <laughs> well, no, write that down. We're gonna start doing that. Yeah, because that sounds uh, easy. You're like <laughs> you need me to write five things down to talk. You are a fucking talk guy. <laughs> like, how are you this bad? <laughs> yeah. But I, it's like you're you're really good. Very conversational. You always you, keep man. and what you guys do very well is you allow for serious. Or real talk, but you're always good at uh, uh, bringing it back to funny and entertaining. It's such a, it's such a, it's the way normal people talk. Yeah. It, you, you don't, you're not like this has to be funny for 60 minutes in a row. So you're not forcing humor. You're not forcing anything. It's super casual, very organic. I love coming on with you guys. Gay! <laughs> <laughs> like that, right? right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love you, man. I'm just so excited he's here, and I just want to fuck around with you. Gay is my favorite, dude. You know what word I'm trying to bring back is Gaylord. Yeah. Oh, why can't I say Gaylord? You should stay at the Gaylord yeah. here in town. Yeah. Is he a buddy of yours? No, no. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a super fancy hotel. We have a super fancy hotel. Well, called the Gaylord? Was yeah. it built in 1970? Oh, no, I can't no, say no, there. There's no mold there. This place is mold-free. Mold-free? In fact, the... Although the, there is a swamp in the middle 
There's a small <laughs> there's a, it's got one of those atriums. Uh, it's got the atrium that yeah. opens up. You know? Oh, super mold. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't Crazy. know. There's pretty humid in there. There's, pretty, <laughs> yeah, there's mold, mold in there. there. <laughs> hey, by the way, guys, I have a I have a special that drops later this month. Okay. Oh, let's talk. Let's let's plug it. Let's plug it. Is it? Uh, it's a call. It's called Four Stories. Because that's all it is, is four stories. Okay. It's an hour and four story, and just four stories. I really thought I would lean into, I like telling long form story. Yeah. And I just thought I was getting. Is this like be, what you were doing at Kimmel? The story time thing? Yes. Oh, right. This so is it's, gonna be it's awesome. just four stories. And not only that, so I, on purpose, in okay, case, so you know, I like to get experimental with how I do things. On purpose, probably three quarters of the audience didn't know I was filming a special. I didn't want them coming in with that energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to just be like, I'm coming to see a show, yeah. a regular comedy show. Not only that, I think comedy's better in smaller venues. I think a, a stadium is amazing. I'm not poo pooing it. I would love to do it someday for ego. But I think even if you asked some of those guys, do you have more fun? It's in 500, 1,000, 2,500 seat places. Co- comedy's better up close. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so I filmed it in a, in a smaller place. And I did two shows, and one of the shows, I had to, because people didn't know, they thought they were just there, there's a woman who was shit-faced, and I had to kick her out. And it took about 10 minutes. And I used that show, and I kept that in the special. Really? Because I was like, oh, this is, I want it to feel like you're coming. So I didn't do any wide shots. You'll never see a wide shot of in the special. It's close-up. Because that's what comedy is. Yeah. That's how you see the show. I want you to feel like you're at the show. And so there's a part of the show where I'm like, hey, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And I had asked her earlier to quiet down. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. There's a mic right next to where you're sitting. I'm trying to film a special. I'm not going to get anything. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. It takes a while to get her out. I do a little crowd work with the audience. And then I say to them, I'm going to have to get back into this joke. We're going to see if it's funny after I stop it for 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, I've never yeah, had to stop wow. this joke for 10 minutes yeah. and jump back in. But I left it in the special because it's authentic to the experience. It's authentic to, to live comedy. Yeah, it's, real. it's one of the reasons why I did it in a place like that so I could have the interaction. And so it's true to a show of mine, which is you're going to if you like storytelling, I'm not going to say I'm the best. I think Ron White is better than anybody. But after that, I think we're all... I, I'm not going to say I'm the best, but I wouldn't say there's anyone better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like for, the, for the long form story that I tell. Four stories, 60 minutes. One oh, of the stories... I love it. Right? So if you like story time, if you like stories... When this, does this come out again? The, 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 the last week of the month. Uh, this month, if you like, yeah, that dude. sounds and awesome. Where, where is it? It'll be on my YouTube channel. Okay, on oh, YouTube, hell yeah, right. easy to find. Easy, yeah. and, and so, man, I'm so excited by it. I, I, I because I, I love, you know, and I had all my people telling me you can't do just four stories, dude. You know, people's attention span, and I'm like, yeah, but this is who I am. Yeah, we have that discussion all the time about the size of things, and I'm just like. I, I don't know, man. This is us. This, this is, is who what I am. Did. Yeah. So, so why would I put out something that wasn't authentic to who I am? Yeah. And it's so great because think about it. Like 20 years ago, the some production company, some, uh, you know, they would fuck it up. because the, Well, even you, now, you, the you networks aren't going to want to do it. The yeah. networks wouldn't want four stories. They're, they're, and, no. and then they're, That's they're, why you YouTube it. They, yes. they, they, corporate editors would make you cut out the part and like not produ- yeah. not release it the way you want. And now you get to oh, release the lady? it. Oh, they make you cut that out yeah. right i mean to you, without a doubt yeah. they would go didn't you film two sets and i would say yes and they'd say can't you just splice the first that story in from the first set and of course i could and of course it would look the same and of course it would be seamless and of course i'm wearing the same clothes and of course it would seem like i did this one show and that's not the experience that i want you to have i want it to be like oh this was a comedy show and there was a live thing and this is what happened and it's gonna be different and there's crowd. There's a part of the set where I was a little high, and I forgot what I had to say, and I had to ask somebody in the crowd, "Do you remember what I was talking about?" <laughs> right, <that's funny. laughs> and yeah. they tell me, and I go, yeah. "Thank you very much," and I get back into the joke. Yeah. But like, I, we've seen the perfect comedy specials on the giant stages with, uh, you know, with the perfect lighting and the people getting up and yay that they practice the crowd to stand up four right, times. Right. right. This is not. 
what I wanted. I wanted it to be different, authentic, kind of raw. I'm excited for it. And, and so, yeah, I'm really excited for it too, man. Dude, that's going to be great. My favorite, I tell a story on that special about um, watching my, having to be in the room with my friend when he was having sex with a deaf girl. <laughs> Hold on. <It's, laughs> Where's that? Four? Three? Yeah. three? Is that four? It's the second story. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It, it's oh, amazing. That but, yeah. sounds, uh, you it's got a, me. But it's a great, it's a, I'm so proud of this special, man. Awesome. And like I said, I'm, I don't think I'm being, I know who I am, like, I, I, but I'm very confident in who I am. I'm not saying I'm better, but I don't know that who's better at the style that I'm doing it. it and it's amazing that the internet has allowed artists to self-release stuff, so now we yeah. could all just do this for fun. <laughs> 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 We're not getting rich anymore. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, Business. Did people used to get no. rich online? <laughs> no, no. no, no, but it is cool because yeah, now you can. Wait uh, till you see the OnlyFans version. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, I gotta uh, also when we're finishing the show, I gotta ask you about your workout routine because that's another thing. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, this guy, he's uh, I, uh, he did his first. Uh, what was it? A sprint triathlon. Sprint triathlon. It's funny in that same. And it went vein, pretty well in that same vein of me, real like trying to force my kids. Like I want my sons to be healthy and exercise every day, and, and then I start really well. Wait a minute, I'm not even that. Well, how are they going to fucking right. be healthy yeah. and exercise right. every day if I'm like I wanted to be something I'm not even doing? So my I'm daughter like, well, does fuck, I one, do it first. She drinks one beer with me when she gets, <laughs> when she gets off work. Yeah. And by the way, and we have one Bud Light in the in the garage. Perfect. Yeah, that's what we that, yeah, I mean, no straight Budweiser because no calories for her. She's a dancer. Yeah, yeah. She, well, she does not an ultra. She, oh yeah. yeah she's, she's a, <laughs> so, is she microdosing yet? <laughs> uh, not yet. Not yet. Well, no, she does do skincare. She has a little refrigerator with yeah. all her skincare products in it. Has to keep them chilled. I have some mushrooms in the bag. <laughs> hey, 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 I think you said that last time. <laughs> you know what I do have if you want to try? What is this? You're not a drug guy, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not something we're, we... we're both addicted I, to marijuana. I, I <laughs> we can't get off these of it. pills that are half mushroom, half San Pedro. You know what San Pedro is? No. It's like, it's like mescaline. Oh, that'll melt you into a bed, right? But but it will. But it's a it's a microdose of each combined. Oh. And, but if you take enough, it's in the macro does. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But but they're so fun. I, we'll, we'll leave you yeah. with a couple I'm pills. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, we're just kidding. That didn't, no, that I come with happen. gifts. Hey, yeah, that would never happen. Oh, yeah, I, I love. I want to watching that Brazil uh, game tonight. Freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why are all the people brown? <laughs> like, this isn't right. Subscribe to Josh Wolf's uh, yeah. YouTube channel. Uh, it, buy your it, tickets it. at the uh, Funny Bone yeah. tonight. It's Orlando.FunnyBone.com. Uh, two shows tonight. Two yep. shows Mushroom tomorrow. Show Late Show. Get yep. that Late Show ticket. Yes, uh, that's going to be fun. Josh, thanks so much. Guys, thank you for having me. We'll see you soon.